Bits, bytes, terabytes, and yobi bytes. It sounds a bit like a Dr. Seuss book, doesn't it? Measurements on a computer are sometimes hard to fathom. What is a bit? Is it smaller than a byte? Well, let's start at the smallest and work our way up. Bits and bytes sound almost the same, but it is important not to confuse the two. A bit is short for binary digit and is the smallest unit of measurement used to quantify computer data. As the smallest unit, it can only contain a single value, and this value can only be a 1 or 0. On their own, bits are relatively useless, so they are combined into clusters of 8 called bytes. One byte can typically store one character, such as an L or an exclamation point. Bytes contain 8 times the amount of information as bits do. With that in mind, it's easy to understand why the two should not be confused. If the bit was a single-seater motorcycle and the byte is an eight-passenger van, imagine the confusion if a car rental place saw the two as interchangeable. Getting to one's hotel with one spouse and six kids would be interesting, to say the least. When abbreviated, both bits and bytes are represented by a B, but bits should be a lowercase b and bytes should be a capital B. Measuring up, we then find kilobits, which I'm sure you've guessed is one-eighth the size of a kilobyte. A kilobyte is equal to 1,000 bytes. A kilobyte would represent around 1,024 characters, or roughly 512 words. In terms of a computer page, one byte would contain about half of a computer page. While most of the following measurements are used with both a bit and byte, for the sake of convenience we will only look at the size of the byte. To figure out the bit, divide by 8. So next up, we find the megabyte. The megabyte is 1 million bytes. An average Kindle book will take about 2.6 megabytes of space to store. Onward to the gigabyte, which contains 1 billion bytes. 1 gigabyte can store roughly 1,000 books. 1 Kindle with 6 gigabyte storage capacity will enable a person to haul 6,000 books on their trip without needing to actually carry those books. This is beneficial for people who are super fast readers but don't want to rent a U-Haul for a vacation. After gigabytes, we find terabytes. One terabyte is the equivalent of 310,000 photos, 200,000 five-minute songs, or 500 hours worth of movies. If that seems impressive, consider our next level up, the petabyte. How big is it really? Well, it can hold the equivalent of 745 million floppy disks. In fact, 500 billion pages of standard type text can be contained in one petabyte. One and a half petabytes are capable of holding 10 billion photos. Google processes more than 20 petabytes every day, which includes around 3.5 billion search queries. That is a lot of cute cat videos. It doesn't seem possible that there could be more levels, but our next level we discover is exabytes. One exabyte is the equivalent of 11 million 4K videos. 5 exabytes is equal to all the words ever spoken by humankind, which is even more surprising when you discover Google holds a total estimated data of 15 exabytes. It's possible they're called exabytes because merely pondering their size might trigger an existential crisis. After exabytes are zettabytes, which are 1 sextillion bytes. Then, disturbingly for those of us who prefer things alphabetized, comes yodabytes, or 1 septillion bytes. To put this in perspective, a septillion is a trillion trillions. A trillion seconds is the equivalent of over 31,688 years. Are there bigger bytes? Yes, but we'll stop here at Yodabytes. Hopefully you've enjoyed this bit about bytes. Sorry, I couldn't resist. To discover how Swan Software Solutions can help take your idea from your head to bits, bytes, and megabytes of data, contact us. For more information, visit us at swansoftwaresolutions.com.